Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Andrei. Today I'd like to talk about Django and UI. Most of you probably know that you could use uh, Django REST backend and on, on top of that backend use either uh, React or any other framework to build nice UI. But my idea was to use full stack from Django and use HTML templates generated by Django and uh, build some nice UI with those uh, with those templates. The reason for that is because I want to consume data from Django backend natively without exposing it for the REST uh, endpoints, and uh, which I think would uh, add extra complexity in, in my case. So I was looking for different uh, CSS frameworks, different UI options, uh, what I could use with Django to make uh, Django UI look nice. I was looking at uh, Bulma CSS, uh, then I was looking into Tailwind, plain Tailwind, Tailwind UI, and finally I found this nice uh, set of UI components from Flowbyte. This is what I decided uh, to use for my own project. And yeah, initially I was trying to build UI with Bulma CSS, which is great, but uh, in my opinion, it works better for the websites. While in my case, I'm building an uh, enterprise application, which would help, uh, which would be like a UI uh, control for ML application for document processing and so on. So it have uh, quite a lot of data entry forms and so on. And this is why I decided to switch to the Tailwind, but I'm not kind of UI guy. I'm not um, uh, someone who would uh, uh, design different uh, uh, spacings, uh, match colors and so on. So I thought I should use something uh, ready and this solution should be uh, flexible and customizable to be, uh, that I would be able to use it with plain JavaScript uh, with, uh, uh, with Django, right? Uh, because I'm not using React or any other toolkit uh, on top of Django. Then, uh, and this is how I came up uh, with, um, I, I found the Flowbyte and uh, they actually provide very nice documentation. They have a separate example how to stop Flowbyte with Django. And th I think this, is, this was um, like a very strong selling point for Flowbyte for me because I was able to set up it in a very nice and simple way, in a clean way, uh, with Django uh, HTML templates. I saw immediately how it works and then I decided to give it a try. So actually I bought a premium version uh, from Flowbyte, which uh, provides like a really advanced uh, <coughs> template with different uh, example forms and dashboards and so on. And this is what I'm trying to now uh, adjust and uh, apply to my own project. So let's, uh, let's see how it works and uh, let's see how and UI uh, generated on top of um, Django looks like uh, with Tailwind uh, Flowbyte components. But a Flowbyte is uh, is based on a Tailwind. Uh, it's it's like uh, I would call it like a, a library of uh, rich UI components based on a Tailwind out of the box. So to so what I did, uh, I installed uh, the first step was to install Tailwind into my uh, Django project. And I documented the steps uh, on the GitHub uh, repository and uh, the URL to my open source project, which I'm building with Django, you'll find below the video. And this project is about UI for ML. And ML use case that I'm working on is uh, data extraction from different types of documents. So to install Tailwind and Flowbyte, it's really easy. Uh, you install Django compressor and because I'm using poetry in my project, so I add Django Compressor through poetry. Django Compressor helps to um, uh, compress and, and group um, uh, CSS uh, files and probably JavaScript, uh, JavaScript uh, content. Uh, there are multiple ways how you could pack uh, all the dependencies and uh, one of them is Django Compressor. Another option is to use like a Webpack, for example. So Maybe in future I'll ex uh, explain the option using Webpack instead of uh, Django Compressor. Maybe not, I'll, I'll, I'll see how it works. For now, I'm following uh, option with Django Compressor because it was documented in uh, Flowbyte uh, uh, guide. Okay, so the next step is to install Tailwind. You install it with NPM, it's really easy. You just install uh, run install command and spe specify Tailwind CSS. 
Then you create Tailwind uh, configuration file where you'll put some information and configuration later on. Then you install Flow Byte library. And the last step is the example how you run um, <clears throat> uh, the process which would listen for any changes you do with styling inside the project and it will uh, rebuild the CSS file and it will be available immediately for serving. So you don't need to uh, restart the process. Uh, and by the way, uh, one uh, very important uh, thing why I decided to go with Flowbyte was that they provide uh, complete end-to-end -end working examples for for the plain JavaScript. So if you look into the Tailwind UI components, they uh, provide end-to-end -end examples for React, for example, or for other toolkits, and they give plain HTML example uh, of the UI components in case of the JavaScript, but there are cases where, for example, you click on the icon, then you need to display uh, the menu, or uh, when you have a slider menu on the left, for example, you want to hide it or show, um, they don't provide uh, working plain JavaScript code for that, while Flowbyte provides uh, for the Flowbyte library and through additional scripts that uh, are coming with uh, this pro version if you buy uh, the full template uh, from them. And yeah, for me, because uh, I don't really want to focus a lot on this UI stuff, I just want to, to grab the thing that works and uh, put it into the, my own project and uh, move on with the actual uh, like logic development. This is great because I don't I, I don't need to uh, spend time on on this um, wiring and mapping uh, HTML with JavaScript for the UI. Okay, so let's go to the actual project, and this is the same thing that you would get from the GitHub uh, and. I'm not doing like a step-by-step -step uh, explanation because this is ongoing project and with each week I'll uh, post updates about the new things that uh, I was adding to the project and uh, hopefully I'll try to be like as technical as possible, uh, which means that you would be able to uh, either use the content directly from my project or you would be able to apply the same stuff for your own projects, what you learn from what I'm talking about. So this is a Tailwind configuration file. This is the main thing uh, that helps to set up Tailwind in your application. It's located uh, in the root directory of your Django project, right over here. And uh, we need to specify path to where the Django HTML templates are located. In our case, they're in Sparrow templates over here. We have a base template and then we have a footer, navigation bar, sidebar and dashboard uh, dashboard page uh, for in this stage. Later I'll add uh, more pages. So if you look, yeah, let, let's let's look into that later. So uh, first there's a Tailwind configuration file and then when we run the process, uh, we run it from the same root directory and this configuration file will be referenced automatically because uh, Tailwind library uh, automatically is able to find Tailwind configuration file in uh, under the root. And we refer to the input CSS and then we provide output CSS file. And input CSS file is located uh, under static directory. And if we open settings, we'll see that uh, uh, static URL, static path is defined uh, for Django. Uh, under Sparrow static, <clears throat> and these uh, uh, Django compressor properties are being defined as well. Uh, this means <clears throat> every time <clears throat> when um, uh, output CSS file will be produced, it will be uh, cached by Django compressor, and uh, it will be cached. Uh, this cached version will be accessible from from the browser, and this cached version will be compressed, obviously. Okay, and if you look into the uh, poetry configuration file, we see that currently <clears throat> we have um, Django and Django compressor installed in project. This is an <clears throat> input CSS file, which uh, is the <clears throat> entry file, uh, entry CSS file for our Tailwind configuration. We import base components and utilities, and there are some uh, additional custom uh, CSS classes that are used by Flowbyte template that I also included into the 
into this uh, input CSS file. And every time when we change something, when uh, the process uh, Tailwind process when Tailwind process runs, then uh, it automatically creates new uh, or replacing uh, existing output CSS with the new content with all the styles. So the the main advantage of Tailwind is that um, we can focus on HTML and we put our styles there, and proper styles that can be, that, that are understood by the browser are being generated by Tailwind and uh, into this resulting CSS file, which is output CSS in our case. Yeah, <clears throat> and then if you look into the base template, so we have lots of metadata metadata information here. Then uh, there are references to the fonts and so on, and uh, this um, uh, includes and um, there is a set of includes and Django uh, template engine uh, allows to do includes and uh, this means you can uh, split uh, your large HTML file into multiple files and uh, merge them together for the includes and this improves a lot uh, development experience. So we got nav navigation bar on the top, uh, then we have navigation bar, uh, sidebar, sorry, on the left side, then there's the main content over here, and then there's a footer in the bottom, and there's a set of um, JavaScript files uh, imported, uh, like the flow by JavaScript file, and there's an application bundle uh, JavaScript file, which contains all the necessary utility uh, functions uh, for flow by template to function. Uh, all the scripts are located over here under scripts directory and you can pack them with uh, into the single bundle with webpack for example and yeah if you look into the dashboard uh, template then we got extends uh, a keyword which also comes from Django template engine and we extend the base and then we put the block content start and then there's a block content end and this is where we put all the HTML content and this content will be rendered in that place uh, in this placeholder which was defined under the base template. Yeah and yeah because I'm using flow bytes so I don't really need to invent any uh, class names by myself uh, because I look into the flow byte components or in my case since I purchased this uh, pro version of the flow byte template I uh, copy <coughs> uh, style classes from there into my project into my Django project and because tailwind is uh, enabled then uh, I get this nice UI out, out of the box uh, I don't need to uh, invent any uh, styling by myself. So let's let's see how it looks like. So uh, Tailwind process runs, but in this case, because I'm not doing any changes in uh, class con uh, configurations, the process uh, probably there's even no need to run it because there'll be no rebuild for the output CSS. I could I could stop it, but anyway, let's it, let it run, and let's start the let's start uh, Django application. Okay, it started. Let's copy the URL and let's go to the browser. Go here. Let's open the application. And this is how it looks. So we can hide the menu, for example, and there are some options that you could open over here. There's a menu on the left. You could, you could click uh, on the menu items and then they would render on this uh, central place. Uh, central dashboard. So this this content here is uh, taken from uh, Flowby directly, and the next step uh, for me would be to uh, adjust and replace it to uh, change the menu structure to be aligned with my own application to change the dashboard and so on. Probably I'll keep the style of the dashboard with the charts because I like it. I'll just uh, make it uh, closer to what I need, and I'll update the menu structure over here. And probably the next step would be also to uh, install um, Webpack and probably instead of using Django Compressor to try to use Webpack uh, as, a, as a single solution which would uh, package all the CSS files and all the custom JavaScript files that are required to support this um, uh, template uh, functionality. Yeah, so Thanks for watching and the point here was to 
share my experience with UI development on top of Django. And if someone uh, is looking how to build nice UI, uh, so I would give you some kind of the, like a head start based on my own research that probably if you want to uh, get very nice looking UI, you should go with uh, Tailwind for Django and look for existing uh, templates and libraries that are uh, already created. And the one which really worked for me was uh, Flowbyte. So I would recommend to look into it as well uh, for your own project. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye.